This is Freddie Mason, who lives in Northland. He's 10 years old and on his way to school. Freddie's good-natured and healthy. I wish I had that much energy on my way to the office each morning. But Jimmy here doesn't seem to be quite awake yet. Freddie seems to be smart, too. Yes, he's right on his toes, our boy Fred. Ah, lunchtime already. In Northton, many of the children have further to go to school and children in bigger towns, so they bring their lunches. When all the desks are put together to form two long tables, it's just like a big banquet, and it's lots of fun. During the noon hour, the teacher, Miss Barnes, has a chance to know the children better. Today, they're talking about what they like to have for lunch. Freddy looks as though he has a good appetite. Perhaps that's our first clue to his good health, the right kind of food. Bobby here drinks pop every lunch period, and he's very fond of cake. And Vera nearly always has jam sandwiches. But I wonder if they will give as much lasting nourishment as this hard-cooked egg, whole wheat bread, milk, and fruit. Maybe Jim doesn't eat the right kind of foods. Perhaps that's why he doesn't have as much pep as Freddy. Miss Barnes has an idea that the children might eat more health-giving foods if they could see the real importance of nutrition. So, a few days later, the class begins a special project during the health period. Miss Barnes gets six baby white rats, all equally active and healthy, to demonstrate her point. Of course, the children are greatly interested in the idea. They've decided to feed the rats on two different diets for a period of four weeks. Rats are used because they eat the same foods as humans and show the same effects of both good and poor nutrition. Because they grow so quickly, these baby rats will show these effects in a few weeks. They're separated into two cages, three in one and three in the other. But first, they're carefully weighed by the children, and Freddie is given the job of starting a chart. The rats are to be weighed every day for four weeks and the weight's marked on the chart to show how each is growing. The children will look for other changes, too. The class decides to feed the rats the same types of food they bring in their own lunches. The food is prepared and placed in small glass dishes. And drinking bottles with special tubes are fitted to the side of each cage. Jimmy and Vera give their rats jam sandwiches and sugar cookies to eat and soda pop to drink. Some of the kids think this sounds like a wonderful diet. Fred and Mary feed their rats on cheese sandwiches and carrot sticks. And they give them milk to drink. Miss Barnes explains that the main factors in a healthful diet are proteins, carbohydrates, starches and sugars, fats, minerals, vitamins, and water. Of course, these are contained in a great many foods, but some foods have more than others. To get a good supply of these factors, you need each day milk, fruit, vegetables, cereals and bread, meat, fish, or meat alternates, and vitamin D supplement. And to help the children learn these facts about food, the teacher uses colored posters, which she obtained from the district health nurse. Next morning at breakfast, Freddie is still talking about the project and tells the family all about it. They're very interested, and his mother particularly thinks it's a good idea. She points out that the breakfast they are eating has the ingredients of a balanced diet as the teacher has outlined it. 
There is fruit juice, whole grain cereal, eggs, toast, and milk. By golly, she's right. Same ingredients, but in a different form from the rat's diet. Even Dad agrees that nutrition has an effect on health. Why, before he was married, he prided himself on having only a cup of coffee for breakfast. But now he finds that by eating a good meal before he goes to the office, he can work better all morning and doesn't get so irritable. But there's one vitamin that we can't get enough of from ordinary foods. Vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. So every day, winter and summer, Mrs. Mason gives the children a vitamin D supplement. Breakfast time is a rush in any household of school children, but by doing a little planning the night before, Fred's mother manages to get the boys off on time and well fed into the bargain. When all is peace and quiet again, Mrs. Mason sits down with her cup of coffee to plan her grocery list. She knows that the cheaper cuts of meat are as high in nutritional value as the more expensive ones, and she often uses meat alternates such as cheese, dried beans, or peanut butter. She plans to do some baking later in the day, which will help to cut down on the cost of extras, such as cakes and cookies. Mrs. Mason does her shopping herself, rather than over the phone. This way, she sees exactly what she is getting for her money. She buys the vegetables that are in season. They're usually much cheaper. Grocery stores today have such a variety of canned goods, it's hard to know which brand to buy. Mrs. Mason knows that price alone is no measure of nutritional value, so she examines the labels carefully to make sure she is getting the grade and weight that she wants. Any one of the brands of skim milk powder can be used for baking or in sauces and soups. The children drink it, too, especially if it's chilled beforehand. From the great variety of cereals on the market, she chooses the whole grain varieties and buys them in the large packages for economy. By shopping carefully, Buying only foods high in nutritional value and then storing them properly, Mrs. Mason is sure of providing her family with the nourishing meals they need. Let's look in on the health period at Freddy's school four weeks later and see what has happened to the rats. The three who had the variety of foods that make a good diet are sleek and active. The children like to handle them because they're friendly and smooth. Their fur is shiny and their eyes are large and lustrous. They look healthy. Now look at the other rats, the ones who had nothing but sugar cookies, jam sandwiches and soft drinks. They haven't grown like the others and they haven't the same personalities or appearance. In fact, there are now only two, as one died of malnutrition. They are hungry, and yet they don't finish their food. They seem to know that it will not satisfy their needs for energy and growth. See how bad-tempered and irritable they are. Notice their small, greedy eyes and scrawny fur. But the other rats on the well-balanced diet eat up their food each day and are good-natured and healthy-looking. Now for the final weighing in. One group has grown and developed normally, but the others, well, they haven't grown at all. The chart shows the growth for the four weeks, and it's easy to see the terrific difference between the two groups. The 
final outcome of the demonstration can be seen more vividly when the rats are placed side by side. Although they were the same size and weight four weeks ago, those fed on the balanced diet have grown healthy and strong, but the others fed on the poor selection of foods have actually lost weight and have become weak and scruffy. And so we see that eating some of the foods from each group every day really does have a great effect on health and growth. And this knowledge has been tabulated for easy reference under the name of Canada's Food Rules. Miss Barnes has a copy of this food guide for each child to take home. Like most 10-year-olds, Freddie is anxious to pass on his newfound knowledge to someone. So, as soon as he gets home, he tells his mother all about Canada's food rules. Of course, Mrs. Mason knows already what is good for her family, but it's awfully easy to get into the habit of giving them what they like best and forgetting to watch nutritional values each day. It's not just one meal, but each day's whole menu that counts. Oh, well, that was last year's calendar anyway. She puts the rules inside the cupboard door where they will be easy to see. Oh, oh, what will cookies do to your diet? Well, we might as well admit that children like cookies. And actually, they need snacks to give energy for all their activity and growth. So Mrs. Mason lets them have some cookies and gives them each a glass of milk. This should keep them going until the next meal, but there'll be no more cookies later, too close to mealtime. Well, Freddy's mother knows just what he should eat. And those five kinds of food allow lots of variety. Let's take a closer look at those food rules. Milk. For Freddy, who is under 12, at least one pint a day. He can drink it by the glass, have it in his soup, eat it in a casserole dish, Take it as ice cream or as a milk pudding. Fruit. One serving of citrus fruit, tomatoes, or vitaminized apple juice. And one serving of other fruit. Vegetables. At least one serving of potatoes. And at least two servings of other vegetables. Preferably leafy, green, or yellow, and frequently raw. Say, I'm getting hungry. Cereals and bread. One serving of whole grain cereal and at least four slices of bread with butter or fortified margarine. Meat and fish. One serving of meat, fish, poultry, or meat alternates. In addition to these, eggs and cheese should be eaten at least three times a week each. Use liver frequently, and don't forget the vitamin D supplement in either capsule, oil, or concentrate form. With all these foods to choose from, it shouldn't be difficult to get plenty of variety. And if Mrs. Mason remembers to give her children some from each of these groups every day, she will be, as they say, on the beam. Sure enough, she's giving them liver for supper. I'll bet she knew we were going to talk about Canada's food rules. Don't forget, it's the day's complete meals that count. Let's see what Freddy had to eat today. Breakfast, citrus fruit, whole grain cereal, bacon, toast, milk. Good. Lunch, raw vegetable, four slices of bread with cheese between, baked custard and milk. Mm -hmm. Afternoon snack, milk and peanut butter cookies. Okay. Dinner, liver, buttered carrots, baked potatoes, cabbage salad, milk, and for dessert, applesauce and gingerbread. Nice work, Mrs. Mason. You stuck to the rules. 
And Freddy certainly is a shining example of good food habits. And food habits include both what you eat and how you feel when you eat. The Masons have happy meal times. No one says, eat it because it's good for you. New foods are introduced early and a little at a time. Kathy hasn't tasted cabbage salad before. She likes it. The Masons enjoy their meals. They eat well because they get lots of fresh air, rest and sunshine. They eat well because they use Canada's food rules. Do you? <laughs>